The Mortal Kombat series is known for infamously violent fatalities and a deep roster of baddest fighters from realms across the multiverse. You get involved. Shang Tsung. Translating these fighting games into movies, as it turns out, is no easy task. The original 1995 movie may have been a maligned box office hit, but it does have a fondly remembered cast. Which led to much cautious anticipation for the latest attempt, with the same named but much improved Mortal Kombat now on HBO Max, a full-on blockbuster with both peaks and valleys. Although most agree that it is better than the 1995 combat, the new entry in the film series is getting a mixed reception, which makes sense. It is a movie that reaches great heights, featuring compelling action choreography and tons of references for fans of the game series to pick up on. It also sports some pretty bad CGI and is filled to the brim with rushed exposition. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's get started at naming the five best scenes in 2021's Mortal Kombat. Sub-Zero vs. Scorpion, Round 1, Mortal Kombat puts its strong foot forward in an opening that takes place centuries before the rest of the movie. By Han, the original Sub-Zero, comes to Hanzo Hasashi's, Scorpion, family home to assassinate him and his family. After seeing his son and wife killed and frozen by the Cryomancer Sub-Zero, Hanzo goes on a rampage, tearing through a legion of assassins with his iconic kunai rope. This leads to an epic showdown between the two. The actors playing the iconic Mortal Kombat duo, Joe Taslam and Hiroyuki Sonata, are veterans of martial arts and samurai cinema. The bouts between them are by far the highlight of the 2021 MK adaptation, and the first one gets the movie off to a rousing start. Sub-Zero walks away the victor, leaving Hanzo dead as the screen fades to black and the title card fades in. It's time for Mortal Kombat. Sub-Zero dismembers Jax with ice, eagle-eyed Mortal Kombat fans undoubtedly noticed from trailers that early on in the movie Jax, Mekid Brooks, is lacking his defining characteristic, his two cyborg arms. The six tours, motherfucker. It doesn't take long for the movie to show the traumatic incident that caused Jax's epic transformation. The early scenes where Jax has both his human arms can be interpreted as a nod to Mortal Kombat 2 the game, where the character made his debut. MK2 is the only time in the series Jax appears without his cybernetic enhancements. In the 2021 Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero is the one responsible for Jax's dismemberment. After hunting down Jax, Cole and his family, Sub-Zero lures Jax into battle. The two have an intense combat session that leads to a pretty gnarly time for Jax when Sub-Zero freezes his arms until they explode into a bloody mess of ice and viscera. Cole discovers his arcana and defeats Goro, Cole unlocks his true potential when the four-armed Goro is about to kill his family. With Allison, Laura Brent, and Emily, Matilda Kimmer, in harm's way, Cole taps into his arcana his body turning into an energy-absorbing armor not unlike the Black Panther costume. As per earlier, the CGI fights in Mortal Kombat aren't the best, but the final moments of this sequence more than make up for that. When tapping into his power, Cole materializes his weapons, a pair of Tonfa, one outfitted with a blade. He proceeds to absolutely go to town on Goro. The Tonfa blades are awfully similar to the Kobu Jutsu, the weapons wielded by Tanya in Mortal Kombat, Deception and Armageddon. Only one of Cole's weapons is bladed, but it definitely feels like Cole's weapons are an homage to Tanya. The Adenian villain made her most recent in-game appearance in 2015's Mortal Kombat X. Tanya fatalities Kano and gets her dragon mark, fighting games are known for creating some of the biggest character rivalries in gaming. Scorpion vs. Sub-Zero is the first to come to mind for Mortal Kombat, but it's not the only defining duo to grace the decades running franchise. Sonya and Kano go way back as storied rivals. Additionally, fans of the original 1995 movie are sure to be reminded of the pair's classic face-off. Get over here. 
Scorpion comes back for revenge. In the biggest twist of the whole movie, Cole's ancestor warps back from the depths of the Netherum to finally defeat Sub-Zero once and for all. That's right, Scorpion is back on the menu. Right before Bai Han is about to deal a death blow to Cole, Hanzo's kunai lodges its way into his back before the ancient hero lets loose his iconic battle cry. It wouldn't be a Mortal Kombat movie without at least one get over here, it is once again worth mentioning how fantastic the action and choreography is in the scenes featuring these two martial arts film stars. The climactic action sequence fully delivers on being one of the best in the movie, featuring weapons, fists, and magic powers in equal measure. Of course, it wouldn't be a father-son bonding moment without Cole joining in to help his ancestor take down the icy villain. Hanzo fully makes the transition to Scorpion and finishes Sub-Zero with the seminal fire-breath fatality Mortal Kombat fans remember from way back in the day at the arcades. <laughs>